Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you again for having me. My name is Nugao and I'm with the Public Policy Institute of California. In the next 10 minutes or so, I will be presenting some of the key findings from our recent work looking at the impact of COVID-19 on science education. And this is joint work with Kathy Dorena from WestEd and Maria Changfei, who's a doctoral student at UC Davis. So recently, if you open up a, a newspaper, you may see some major headlines talking about the test score declines. And as you read through the, those articles, you notice that you know there has been some really dramatic test score declines. But then most of the articles are talking about the test score declines in math or ELA, English language arts. So far, there has been very little evidence talking about or studies looking at how the pandemic has really affected science education. And we all know that even before the pandemic, science had taken the back seat to math and English language arts. So because of the lack of prioritization, we think the pandemic's impact might be more dramatic. So in this study, we're trying to fill this research gap and we're hoping to achieve four goals and each goal would correspond to one research question. So the first goal, we're trying to understand what are some of the impact of the COVID-19 on science education. And the second goal, in the second goal, we're trying to understand some of the challenges facing high need districts. And those are districts that serve a large share of low income students, English learners, and also foster youth students. In the third goal, we're trying to understand or explore districts plans to support science recovery. So for example, what are some of the common strategies and also programs have those districts developed or adopted to help students recover from the pandemic? And the last part, we're trying to identify what are some of the policy levers we can actually leverage in order to support a more equitable science recovery. And in this study, we're using uh, our, the data for this study are coming from three primary data sources. The first one is in the fall of 2021, we launched a statewide survey of school districts. And in the, uh, in the survey, we asked them about, you know, how does COVID-19 really affect your operation and also your programming for science education? And in California, we have about a thousand uh, districts and those districts serves about 6 million students. And in our survey response, we got about 200 districts responded, and those districts in total served about half of the K-12 student population. We all know that nationwide, you know, there has been a very dramatic decline in survey response rate due to COVID-19. So even though 230 doesn't look like a lot, but we're pretty, uh, pretty happy with the results. And importantly, there's no significant difference in terms of the district characteristics. So for example, high need or poor districts were just as likely to respond to the survey. And most of the difference are coming from district size or locale. So for example, rural districts, which tend to be smaller, they're less likely, they were less likely to respond to the survey. And we know this has been true even before the pandemic. The second piece of data are coming from district's uh, annual accountability documents. Those are called the local control accountability plans. So all of the districts were required to develop and also post their plans on their website. So we were able to obtain about close to 900 plans. And those plans, they, they include a lot of details about what districts are trying to do and also the, the types of programs, also services they're providing to students. And the last piece of information is the semi structured interviews with educational partners. So we talked to nearly all of the county offices of education's regional leads for science. We also interviewed a sample of high need districts and also some of the districts who are uh, who were really uh, leaders in terms of implementing the state's new science standards, also called the, uh, the California Next Generation Science Standards. And last, we also interviewed about 15 statewide organizations and also statewide policymakers. And so uh, in the next few slides, uh, I will just walk you through some of the key findings. And let me just start with some more encouraging news. So in 2013, almost 10 years ago, California adopted a new science standards. Those are called the Next Generation Science Standards or, 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 or NGSS. So if implemented well, NGSS has the potential of transforming science teaching and learning. And in 2016, we did an initial study looking at districts implementation and back then you can see that 78 percent of districts said they were in the implementation phase as defined by the state 
So in our recent survey, we asked them, you know, before the pandemic, you know, which phase were you in? And you can see that 94% of the districts said, you know, they were in the implementation phase. So over time, you know, the NGSS implementation was progressing, which is really encouraging. But then there came the pandemic, which pretty much derailed science education. So in our survey, we asked districts, you know, compared to pre-pandemic, to what extent has science education became a higher priority, lower priority, or stayed about the same priority? And in this chart, you can see that, you know, 62% of districts said, you know, science had became an even lower priority compared to before the pandemic. And uh, there is not much variation across districts. And the only interesting thing we're seeing here is the urban-rural divide. So to the right of the of this slide, you will see the breakdown for rural districts. So about half or close to half or 47% of the rural districts said, you know, science stayed as about the same priority, which is great. And uh, fewer of them said science became a priority compared to statewide. And uh, interestingly, about 13% of the rural districts said science actually became a higher priority. So we did some interviews with some rural counties and districts. So they were said they basically said, you know, because the remote location and also the lower population density, they were actually able to reopen much earlier. So as a background in California, the vast majority of students spent the entire 2020-21 school year online. So from for some rural districts, they as uh, one of the rural districts we talked to, they actually only closed for about two weeks and then they were able to bring students back right away. Uh, and also because in rural areas, there's a lot uh, ample outdoor space. So we've seen some of the rural districts getting really innovative. They started doing a lot of science expedition and also science summer camps, trying to, you know, uh, trying to prioritize, you know, science education. And the another way that COVID-19 has really derailed science education is that during the time of crisis, districts provide a very limited support for science education. And in this figure, what we're showing here is some of the very commonly used or evidence-based strategies to help students learn. And the green bars we're showing is the share of districts that are providing those kind of supports for math or English language arts. And the orange bars are the numbers for science. And you can see that, you know, just scanning through the chart, you will see that fewer districts actually provide support for science education. And one of the things I will highlight is the small group instruction or the high dosage tutoring. It was uh, so this one was considered as one of the best, if not the best, you know, strategies to help students recover. But we found that only 25% of the districts were actually providing this kind of service for science education. And last in our survey, we also asked districts looking ahead to what extent do you do you plan, you know, to prioritize math, ELA, or science in your recovery plans? And so this chart summarizes the findings. So overall, you can see that 80, over 80% 80 of districts said math or, or ELA is a high priority in their uh, recovery plans. But when you look at the science, it's just really heartbreaking. Only 27% of the districts said, you know, science, you know, um, is a priority in their recovery plans. And, and we're also seeing that 40% of districts said, you know, science is a low priority or not a priority at all. So all of this taken together is really showing a very dramatic impact of pandemic on science education. It also points to a very long recovery ahead, given the lack of priority, um, prioritization in science education. So this is the end of some of, the, uh, of, of my presentation, and you may find more additional results and also analysis in our report together with our policy recommendation. Thank you all again, um, uh, and I'm looking forward to the Q&A later.